Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness for, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. God of all grace and tender, fierce mercy, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, this year, as I've pondered the Christmas story, and especially the story this morning of Emmanuel, the with us God, I found it wanting to sink deeper and deeper into my life and into my soul. And so I hope to, to share that with you. You know, the, the familiarity of the story and all the excitement and activity around Christmas can kind of numb us to the profound gift of Emmanuel, the with us God. And actually, I think Matthew is aware of that as he frames his gospel. And he wants to move beyond, in a sense, just telling a story beyond theology, so to speak, and make it very, very human. So what he does is he tells us many very personal, poignant stories in the hope that it would inspire us to let Emmanuel be with us in, in the challenges and the pain and the struggles and the, and the losses of life. 
Now, in the midst of all of that is lots of theology, lots of, of narrative about the, the whole story. And yet in the midst of that narrative are these amazing stories. So immediately following the Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus comes down the mountain, a leper runs up to him. And remember, lepers were completely ostracized. And everything about leprosy was shameful. It was thought that somehow they had sinned and, is, and they were the, the cause of their leprosy, shrouded in shame. And, and, and because they were afraid of how they perceived the contagiousness of leprosy, Lepers weren't allowed to be around. They had to always keep their distance. And so this leper runs up to Jesus and falls down and says, if you are willing, you're able to make me whole. And Jesus, not only is the leper breaking the taboos, Jesus further breaks all the the taboos and requirements. And he reaches out and touches him and says, I am willing to be cleansed. And instantly in that moment, the Emmanuel with us dispels all the shame. All of that man's being ostracized is removed by Jesus' touch. A few stories later, Jesus is walking along and he sees Matthew at the at the tax collector table and He invites Matthew to come be with him, be one of his followers, join his his band of disciples. And Matthew immediately gets up from the table and follows Jesus. And then that night, there's a party at Matthew's house, and there's Jesus with, with all the sinners and tax collectors, all the rejected, despised people. So the tax collectors were hated because they were perceived as cheats that stole from the people. But there in Matthew's house is Jesus seated at the table inviting the sinners and the tax collectors to dine with him. The religious people have become all upset. But Jesus is Emmanuel, the God with those that everyone else has rejected. He welcomes them at table with him. And there they are having a party, celebrating that Jesus has called Matthew and all of them to be with him. He is the God who is with us, even in the places where we feel rejected, especially in the places where we would feel rejected. A few stories later in Matthew's gospel, the, his band of disciples had been with him a while now, and, and they'd been ministering, and they need to cross the, the lake to go to the other side. So Jesus places him in a boat and sends him to the other side, but he says, I need to go up the mountain and pray. So he does that. He goes up all by himself on the mountain to say his prayers. Then he comes down, and a storm has arisen on the lake. The wind is blowing and the waves are high and, and frightening, and, but Jesus walks on the water to the boat. Think of it as Jesus walking over the troubles of life. But the disciples are all, they're in the boat surrounded by the wind and the waves and they're afraid already and they see Jesus and they think it's a ghost and they're terrified and they cry out and Jesus says, don't be afraid, it's me, it's me. And Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, call me to come join you. And so Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat to join Jesus. Great courage. But then he looks around and he sees the waves and the wind. He sees the troubles of life and all the challenges. And he starts to sink and he cries out. Again, Jesus reaches down, touches him, takes his hand pulls him up out of the storm, says, oh, Peter, why, why did you doubt? And, t- and they join Jesus in the boat, and, and there they are. 
in the midst of Peter's failure, so to speak, the failure of his faith, Jesus touches him, raises him up, and then there they are together. Jesus, the Emmanuel, the with us God. What Matthew wants to make so clear to us is it's not just religion. It's not just theology. It's the God who wants to touch us in the places of our shame. The God who wants to invite us to be with him in the places where we have been rejected. The God who raises us up in the midst of the struggles when we feel we have failed. And the God who says to us now, let's begin again together. I'm reminded of a really fun story for me. I was in my, my mid-20s and visiting my pastor in his home, and he had a three-year-old son, and his wife had made cookies, fresh batch of cookies, and placed them on the back of the kitchen counter and said to everybody, now these are for after dinner tonight, no one get any. And so while the family was busy doing whatever they were doing, their three-year-old son, went into the dining room, grabbed a chair, drug it over to the kitchen counter, climbed up on the chair, got in the cookie jar, and eating cookies. So we began, to, forever we were, we began to make our way towards the kitchen, and I guess their son, his name is Matthew, heard us, and he begins to climb down from the chair, and as we turn the corner, and uh, Matthew's standing in the middle of the kitchen, and um, there he is with cookie crumbs on his face and the chair still there and the cookie jar is open and his father says man man why why did you get into the cookies you know those those are for after dinner tonight and Matthew stands there looking up at his dad and his chin starts to quiver and he says I didn't <laughs> And his, his father his father <laughs> just can't help himself he laughs and then he reaches down and swoops Matthew up in his arms and holds him close and walks into the family room, into his favorite chair, and there they sit, and he just holds his son there. Emmanuel is the God who comes to be with us in all the challenges and the rejections and the shame and the failure of our life, and says, oh, I am with you. Let me touch you and make it well. Let me be good news of great joy in your life. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Amen. Rejoicing in the love of God made flesh in Jesus Christ, let us bring the petitions of our heart this Christmas, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church gathered in this place, that we might make known the good news of God's presence in our world, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those lost in prejudice, hostility, and fear, and for our brothers and sisters in any need or trouble, that God's light and life might gladden their hearts this day, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and for refugees, for children born in the midst of poverty and pain, that there may be room at the inn for all God's people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and the dying among us, and for those who care for them, that God might bless them with gift of peace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these things through our Lord Jesus Christ, newly born this day into our hearts. Amen. Beloved, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
Good morning. Actually, I should say good afternoon. This is premiering in the afternoon, and so good afternoon to you. Merry Christmas to you, as I said in the sermon. What a, what a joy to share this day with you. My name is Jim Clark, and I'm delighted to be welcoming you to our online worship this afternoon and, and wishing you all the best. So one of the fun things we do at St. Barnabas is to pray with people that have birthdays or anniversaries, other special events in their lives. I actually have two grandchildren that are Christmas babies. So if, it's the, if you have an anniversary or a birthday, I, I invite you to let us pray for you and bless you. And I invite all of our worshipers to join us in a spirit of prayer. So the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these your servants as they begin another year and these that begin another year together. Grant that they might grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in you and your goodness now and all the days of their lives. And in these coming days, Lord Jesus, grant him grace to experience you as the God who is with them the God who is with them as good news of great joy. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. So it's my privilege this time of year to say thank you. And there are so many that I want to say thank you to. I begin with our musicians and this remarkable beauty that they give us. Our interim music director, Michael Salazar, and choir director, Robert Hyde, have just, they're just doing spectacular work for us. And I trust you've, you've been enjoying the music that they've been leading us in. And, and then all the musicians, all the singers and the musicians, they give so much and work so hard for us. So let us just thank them immensely. And when you see them, if, if you see them, let them know or Maybe write a note here or there or an email and tell them how much you appreciate all that they've been giving to us and especially for this service and all throughout the season of Advent and beyond. And then I want to say thank you to Sarah Peterson and Kate Fimbres for the spectacular work they've been doing on the children's pageant that premiered at 9 o'clock this morning and I strongly commend that to you. Then of course we want to say thank you to all of our worship ministers, the the lay readers and the Eucharistic ministers and the ushers and the greeters and, and then especially our regathering team and all those that have been working really lots and lots and, and um, carefully and uh, following the guidelines and all the practices to keep us safe. And the leader of that, of course, as you heard me say, is Jim Rector, a member of our vestry, longtime member of St. Barnabas. What a great work he and his team have been doing so that we can worship safely. So a great big shout out to them and, and all that they do for us. Altar Guild, Acolytes, our fine arts committee that has decorated the, the sanctuary here and, and outside for our outdoor services for Christmas Eve. Great big thank you to you. You just, the beauty you give us means a lot to us. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. So it's also an opportunity for me to say thank you to all the behind the scenes folks, especially our staff, our administrative teams that, that do, do all, connect all the dots and, and, and pass things from this to this to this and organize it all and just make it all work, produce the bulletins for us and keep us all uh, informed and our spectacular communications team, uh, Communications Director Amy DeCalson and her new wonderful assistant Molly Vinger and, and they just, just give us so much. Again, they give us so much beauty and the, and the staff, the, the bookstore team and all the admin team that, can, again, they, they just put it all together and, and make it work for us. And so a, a giant thank you to them. And then, of course, our sound and visual team, our audio visual team that they're, they're, they're back there behind the curtain, you know, and always w making sure it all works for us and um, uh, setting it all up and 
problem solving and putting it all together. And, you know, when you hear me say all this, I, I, I hope you don't kind of check out. I mean, it, it's easy to do that because there's so much, but it's good for us to realize all that it takes to be this parish of St. Barnabas and and then, and then all the, the lay leaders and participants and servants that make it all happen. The generosity of spirit of this community is just remarkable. And so it's good to pause for a moment and do our best and name them all. And our, our, our setup teams, our, our maintenance teams, and those that take care of the grounds and the buildings, just giant, giant thank you. Thank you for those that give so much to support and sustain and be a part of the mission and ministry of St. Barnabas. So I want to ask you to be generous in your Christmas giving this year. We, we continue to have a lot of needs and it's, it's hard to realize what it takes to make it all happen even as we do worship here in the sanctuary and this it's a virtual service, but we're here in our sanctuary and, and at the same time worshiping outside and then, and then all the online ministry we're doing. There's, there's just a lot of ministry happening in our church. And so as you are able, as you are able and as you feel led in, in your response to God's goodness and abundance in your life, for that to include the support of St. Barnabas, we're ever so grateful for your generosity. Bless you, bless you. And as I said in my sermon, may, may this year the story of Christmas be the story of good news, of great joy for you and for your family. Amen. Thank you. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, power and the glory, forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, Come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace. Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. 